All right, I'm here with Daniel Hubble, and you're from the Windows Accessibility Group. Tell me about uh, the, the group and what you do. Sure. Uh, the Accessibility Group at Microsoft is actually a part of a larger organization called Trustworthy Computing. Mm -hmm. And in brief, we're the organization that really oversees the strategy for corporate-wide initiatives, things like security, privacy, online safety, environmental sustainability, yeah. uh, geopolitical policy, and then accessibility. Mm -hmm. And so today we want to talk a little bit about some of the accessibility features in, in uh, Windows. These are things that, you know, a lot of times you see the accessibility directory off the start menu, and you right. not, might not go in there and poke around because you think, well, I, I probably don't need to use some of those. But there's some really cool things in there. Tell us a little bit about some of those. Yeah, well, I've got a, a short list of things, and the key part actually is, is something that you just said about the accessibility control panel that used to exist in Windows XP. Um, it turned a lot of people off. The language just wasn't right. My dad, who might have trouble with his vision, said, uh, well, uh, there's this little picture of a wheelchair. I'm not disabled. What do I need yeah. to... So uh, in Windows Vista, we actually changed that. It's now the Ease of Access Center. And there's sort of a stylized recycling logo that we'll look at in, in a minute. And uh, the whole premise was, here's a place where you can go to change all of your settings for personalization and accessibility to make the computer easier to see, hear, and use. Yeah, well, let's dive in. Yeah, so let's go. So the first thing that I always like to demo that is a new feature to Windows 7, which is my favorite feature as a person who demos for a living, is the new magnifier. Yeah. Now, a lot of people were familiar with the magnifier on the mouse, and they were usually familiar with it because they'd accidentally hit that button and the little <laughs> lens would come yeah, up yeah. and they'd be like, how do I turn it off? Yeah. Well, for, for Windows 7, we made it a lot simpler for people to actually get to. So the simplest thing to do, I'm just going to open a, a browser uh, uh, explorer window. And from this point, instead of having to go into the control panel and turn something on, which has been the typical way we do stuff, the Windows team actually just created a hotkey for this. Yeah, which makes I love a whole this. lot yeah. of sense. So being on the desktop, all I have to do is just hit the Windows key on the keyboard. I'm going to hit Windows key and the plus sign. And this is actually just going to zoom me right in on my screen. So here I've got now a magnified view of my desktop. Yeah. And the way to move around, this is the full screen mode. The way I can move around is just by pushing the edges of the screen around with my mouse. Mm -hmm. So if I want to move down, I just push down. If I want to move right, I just push off to the right side of the screen. So this is one way I can do that. Now, some people get um, disoriented because you may not know where you're at. Like if I zoom in a couple more times on here and I've got a great zoom in of, of a couple of icons on the screen, but I don't know where I'm at in the context of the rest of the uh, page. There's a little watermark here that looks like a magnifying glass. And when I click on that, I can actually go to the views menu and change this into, or I'm sorry, come down to this preview full screen. And when I preview the full screen, it actually gives me a grayed out preview of the entire screen and a little sh box, which is the area that I'm going to zoom into. And yeah. when I pause, that's where it'll actually Very cool. zoom into. So it's a quick way for me to jump around the screen. Quickly. And how do you get back out of here easily? Easy way, easiest way to get back out of here is either Windows key minus to go back to 100%. Or when you have uh, Magnifier as the active window, you can, of course, just hit uh, um, Alt F4. And nice. And I notice sometimes if I have to take a screenshot of something I want it to be big, it looks better if I zoom in like that and take the screenshot there than if I took it and then tried to magnify it in like Photoshop or yeah. something. Yeah, I mean, that's one way you could do it. Now, that actually leads me to the second way to make things larger on your screen. Uh, most people don't realize this, but uh, it, it, Windows XP, there was a way you could change your font size, and it was kind of wonky, and, yeah, and yeah. You know, your fonts would be big, but the icons were still small. Yeah. So Windows 7, the team did a great job with changing the way that your font and DPI settings work in the way it renders icons. As you know, having a high monitor resolution is key to really have the crispness and the visual uh, sense of your screen. A lot of people will just say, well, I'm going to change my monitor resolution to 400 by 600 so everything looks bigger. Yeah, but not you, the best way. You want your native uh, resolution. You, you want the native resolution because you lose all the fidelity yeah. that those extra pixels are, are intended to give you. So the easiest way to find this, I go to the Start menu, and in the search box, I just type in Font. And when you type in Font, there's an item here that says Make Text and Other Items Larger or Smaller. Mm -hmm. And when you click on this, it's going to take you to this control panel for the display. And by default, it's going to be on this setting here, smaller, 100% default. Well, that makes sense, right? You want it to be at 100% resolution. 
I can change this to 125%, and in fact, if I go on the left and set custom text size, I can actually move this slider to all the way up to 200%. So I'm going to show 150 just for dramatic effect. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click OK on that. And it's going to tell me that uh, once I apply this, I have to log out and log back in for these to take effect. So I'm going to quickly log out and log back in. And once I log back in, you're actually going to see that now the icons on the screen here are much larger. There's my mouse, of course, telling me to install. The icons are actually much larger here on the bottom of the screen in the taskbar than they were. Even the, the clock first time. is a little bit bigger. The too, clock yeah. is a little bit bigger. When I open that same Explorer window, you can see now it almost fills my desktop. Yeah. But I still have that native resolution, and you can see how beautiful it looks. And it's not all pixelated as if you had, you know, dumbed down your yeah. the resolution on your very nice screen. So that there is the high DPI settings, which I really like, and. Um, another thing that, uh, if we pull up Internet Explorer, I'd just like to point this out. Now, it uh, looks like we might ha not have an Internet connection here, but um, one of the, uh, I can even show it to you on this screen, which is in the custom, uh, or I'm sorry, in the magnification of Internet Explorer, you'll notice that it automatically defaulted the magnification of Internet Explorer to 150% because mm -hmm. it recognized that that's what I set the system settings for font size. Yeah. So it's automatically going to change those settings across any application like Office and Internet Explorer that's really looking for, hey, what size do you want me to display this? Nice. Yeah. That's a nice touch. So another type of disability that people have, um, aside from low vision, that we've wanted to address with Windows is how do you type or how do you use a computer without being able to use a mouse and a keyboard? I mean, there's a whole range of disabilities that impact our ability to use our arms, right? Yeah, yeah. And so um, some of those are disabilities. Some of those are permanent. Some of them are temporary. I mean, you could be out playing rugby. I don't know if you play rugby, but you could be out playing rugby on the weekends and break your arm. If or, I did play rugby, I would break my you arm. You would break yeah. your arm, yeah, as, as would I. You lose the, the, the use of your arm, and how are you going to use the computer? Yeah. So what we have here is I'm going to come here, and I'm going to open WordPad. And um, many people who are familiar with the tablet PC um, on-screen keyboard, this may look a bit familiar, but it has a twist. We have an on-screen keyboard specifically for accessibility. And the way I'm going to get to that is I'm going to go to the control panel. I'm going to go to the Ease of Access Center that I mentioned earlier with mm -hmm. this little stylized recycling logo. We'll click Ease of Access Center again. Always skip this section. And I'm going to turn these off so that the lovely lady doesn't keep talking to us. Uh, I'm going to start the on-screen keyboard. So once I click and I bring up the on-screen keyboard, now I can um, resize this keyboard to make it a little bit smaller to fit here in the space. Remember, I have the the DPI setting set on high right now, so yeah. it's taking up more space on the screen. I've got WordPad open, and I have my on-screen keyboard down here. Now, I'm using the mouse to point here, but there are a number of different devices that we just don't have time to talk about today for doing input, everything from head tracking devices to um, uh, scanning switches that will actually scan portions of the screen to do input. Today, for simplification, I'm just going to use the mouse to point here. And so I'm going to start typing, let's say H-E. And you'll notice that above the keyboard, there's actually a list of predictive text that has come up. So unlike the standard uh, on-screen keyboard for like tablet PC, which has no predictive text, our yeah. accessibility keyboard actually is trying to provide you with that extra step of, I'm going to try and save you three or four clicks yeah. because you might have trouble inputting text. That's awesome. Save you a little bit of time and uh, whatever you're typing in there, hopefully it's got the word in, in already. Yeah, well, and it'll learn from you. So as you begin, so for example, I do demos a lot where instead of H-E-L uh, for hello, I'll actually type in helicopter. Yeah. And after doing that three or four times, helicopter will be the first option that it gives me in that predictive text link. So it nice. actually learns from you over time of what are the most common words that you use. Very cool. Yeah, it's, it's very cool. So that's inputting text, which a lot of people just don't realize that this is this is here and that you can 
And we actually use this in the studio quite a bit because all of our, our monitors for the cameras are touch screen. So yeah. we're always dragging out the, the on-screen keyboard. Right. Well, and uh, for a lot of people, um, you know, they're used to this new paradigm of uh, phone keyboards, yeah. right? And being able to type on your phone or on some sort of tablet device where you're, you're actually using a touch um, a touch device, and so this is sort of an important, um, you know, thing for people to know. It's like, hey, there's yeah. actually some tools here that give you some added advantage, mm -hmm. uh, particularly with the predictive text. Now, on that note, another thing. This is actually not something that's new to Windows 7, but I find a lot of people don't realize that there's al applicability to this. And uh, I use the example of texting on on our phone and using an on-screen keyboard, where um, we're very linear in the way that you do um, shifted key commands. So yeah. if you do like shift P, you don't hold the shift key on the keyboard and hit the P, right? You hit shift P in order yeah. to get the capital P. So there's actually a whole generation of people that I've met, my you know kids age and, and even uh, uh, you know kids that are five or 10 years younger than me, yeah. <laughs> that have grown up in this world of texting on an on-screen device. Mm -hmm. and they're used to this whole single shift paradigm, which I'm not used to because I learned typing the old-fashioned way. Yeah. But I've actually had this demand, hey, is there a way that I can set it so I just hit the shift key and then hit the key that I want? And amazingly enough, going all the way back to Windows uh, 95, I think, we have uh, something called sticky keys. Most people, again, like magnifier, found it by accident. Yeah. And the easiest way to turn it on is to push the shift key five times. Yeah. And this is how I usually see this, is I've accidentally held down a button. You hold the button down and you push it. Well, what this does, once I turn this on, is that now if I want to type, I'm sitting here typing, I can actually hit shift P and you'll hear the little beep so it registers that, oh, I did it. But I could do control alt delete by just pushing the keys in sequence instead of having to hold them all together. Nice. So for someone who's used to that paradigm of... Or of someone who's broken their arm in rugby. Broken their arm in can, rugby is a classic you example. Control, you can still do control alt delete because doing it with one hand, you know, I've tried it before and it's a little difficult. It's a little difficult. Um, so yeah, sticky keys, another one of those things that a lot of people just forgot was in Windows. But and can you turn it back tool. off by hitting the key five times? Yes. There you go. There you go. You can turn it off. There's also a taskbar tray icon that comes up, and mm -hmm. you can actually just click on that and, and close it from there. You can nice. just say close. So that is uh, sticky keys. Um, I'm going to undock the window real quick. Now, there's a whole slew of keyboard shortcuts in Windows. And yeah. you know, the, the people out here in Cyberland probably know many of them because I know a lot of uh, developer types in particular love their keyboard. I love my keyboard shortcuts. You can take my mouse. I don't even need it. Loving keyboards. Uh, so a lot of guys will probably know this, but in the general consumer population, I find that most people don't understand a lot of these keyboard shortcuts. And the one that I actually really love that most people don't think about is arranging windows on your desktop. So we have the arrow snap feature. If I grab my mouse and I can dock on the left, dock on the right, take it to the top and go full screen. Yeah. Everybody I think is well versed in that. A lot of people don't know that you can actually do that with a keyboard as well. Yeah. So I can do windows key arrow left, windows key arrow right, windows key arrow up, and it's gonna go full screen arrow down, does a minimize back to its original state. So. A lot of people don't know that you can pop the windows around. Yeah, I saw a Reddit today I learned on that uh, not too long ago. So there's still people out there who need to pick this one up. It's yeah. very simple. It's very simple. And in addition to that, all of the items in your taskbar, I don't know if you knew this one or not, they're all numbered. Yeah. So if I want to open Internet Explorer, I can just actually hit Windows 1 because Internet Explorer is the first item in my taskbar right mm -hmm. now. And Windows key 2. So you can actually set up your... your um, uh, pin your applications to your taskbar yeah. and quickly get to them. Um, yeah, and one Windows of the key. things with the Windows arrow key is if you're using two monitors, you can't dock to the middle of either of the monitor because, you know, it's not an edge. Right. So you can instead just use the Windows arrow and dock it to the things that you can't normally dock it to. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's like it's almost like an interim point that it yeah. recognizes. Yeah. So now we're talking a little bit about text input. So it, I think it uh, begs for us to go to what I think is one of the coolest features in Windows. I've loved this Windows for a long Vista. time, yeah. Um, I'm going to unplug my mouse real quick, and I'm going to plug in my headset. 
Speech recognition is by far, I think, one of the coolest Star Trek features that we have in, yeah. in Windows. Some people know that it's there and have never played with it and never seen it. There's a lot of people that are